Hey everybody, this is the Sliders Review. And since it's Women's History Month, I'm here today to talk to you about Power Rangers Lost Galaxy episode Memories of Miranoi. This is one of my favorite episodes, mainly because it's a Maya episode and Maya is my favorite Lost Galaxy Ranger. I always loved the fact that she was an alien. Not only that, but she was like this jungle girl and she was literally just taken from her home and, you know, ended up in like, like just like a world beyond anything that she knew and grew up with, you know? And I love that naiveness to her. I also like how she had like a sixth sense to like animals and can hear their thoughts and can like communicate with them. I always found that fascinating. They never really, but see the problem I always had with the character, they never really explored her that much. They never said why she's able to talk to like Galat the Beast. Cause I don't think she can talk to like other animals and stuff. Um, but so far it's just like the Galactobe, but she could probably talk to other animals and stuff. And I'm also, it's really curious because you know, the Quasar Sabers and those Power Rangers came from her planet. So she knows all about those like Zords and stuff like that. And so, you know, I always felt like that was missed opportunity. If it was probably like nowadays, they'll probably explore it more. Also, one of the things that always bugged me was kind of like how she lived in like the jungle and there was no electronic um, anything. And then as soon as she's on Terra Adventure, she knows how to like work stuff and everything, you know? So that's something that's always bugged me. But I've always liked her character because how tough she is and how naive she is and stuff like that. Plus, I love her hair. <laughs> <laughs> now you know how I am about good hair, even though that was a wig on her head, which I had no idea at the time until the actress revealed and stuff. And so like, this is like, cause Maya only has like three solo episodes, one in which she shares with Kendrick's. And I love myself some Kendrick's too, but I always like that, like that aliens, um, element to like Maya and stuff. Now what's great about this episode is that we get some backstory into her. Like when she was younger and stuff, we get to see flashbacks. That was amazing because with every Power Ranger this season, except for like Karan, we never really get no backstory into like what they was like before they came like Power Rangers and stuff. And I always thought that was cool. They did that with her. And so we got to see her as a kid. We got to see her a little bit older, grown up and everything. And they never revealed how old she is. That's the interesting thing, because these Power Rangers are adults, but they never explain exactly like how old she is. So it starts off with a girl whose cat is stuck in the tree. And so Maya being the jungle girl that she is, she just runs up there with like ease and everything. And so, you know, she gets the cat out, the little girl's all happy. And then all of a sudden Maya sees a woman that looks familiar to her. And so when she confronts this lady, it turns out to be a woman named Shauna or Chandra, uh, which is her best friend from Miranoi. Maya cannot believe this and she is beyond thrilled and everything. And we finally get to see somebody that Maya knew who she like grew up with and stuff, her best friend. Now her best friend is dressed very similar to Maya, except for her outfit is black. And you know, I found that really interesting and odd. Like when I saw her outfit, because like, I'm just like, why is her outfit so similar to Maya's? Cause Maya's outfit isn't a Miranoi outfit. Like, cause her Miranoi outfit is just like jungle attire. Like you will see somebody like, you know, like long rags and like fuzzy stuff, you know, stuff like that. And so when, she went to Terra Venture. They gave her like a modern update of like um, a jungle type attire outfit. So it's like, you know, human type material, like leather and stuff, but it has like a jungle motif to it. And so her friend has that. And I always thought that was kind of odd, you know what I'm saying? And so like when Maya sees her, she just can't believe it. And she's so curious to know how did Chandra get there? Like she's a little suspicious and stuff. And so Sandra's backstory 
makes sense. You know, when the planet was turning into stone, she was running. And like, so a portal opened up and she landed like on Terra Venture. And Maya's like so thrilled because she's like, wow, that happened to me too. <laughs> and everything. And it's great to see Maya like this. Like, I love this version of Maya like so much. And so, you know, they're walking and everything. And we, and so, like, at some point in time, she introduces her to Kendrick's. And Kendrick's is like all thrilled to meet, like, you know, Sandra and everything. But she doesn't question how, like, she got there. So. Kendris is going to throw them kind of like a feast and everything, and Kai is going to make it. And so when they do, Maya and Chandra doesn't show up. So this really upsets Kendris to the point where she's almost crying. Aww. <laughs> and stuff. Like, that was so sad to see. Like, she is devastated, man. And Damon, he's all like, well, I mean, even though they didn't show up, we can still eat the food. <laughs> 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 stuff oh boy he cracks me up and then so at this point i love the scenes that happen next we get flashbacks and everything we get to see little maya and little like sandra and their outfits are reminiscent to what they're wearing right now so that's kind of odd again you know what i'm saying it's just like fabric and stuff so i guess they it's, it's, it's just the cheap Saban thing. They're like, okay, just make the outfit similar and so you know it won't confuse people. But no, I want to see some jungle clothes, man. <laughs> and so we get to see like, you know, little Maya and Sandra running. Then we get to see the older versions. And this is the part where it's a continuity mistake. But the older versions are wearing the identical outfits they are when they're on Terra Venture. That's not possible. That's always bugged me and stuff. That's like a huge error. Like, couldn't they have find some rags or something like that for them to put on? Or some like fuzzy like coats or something? But anyway. And so like we see um them I think we see them jumping or swinging or something like that. And so we get to see little the little kids like you know trying to pull the quasar sabers out and everything. They're pulling the blue and the pink one out. And Maya's all like, I think it budged. Oh, I fall shattering, man. I love that. Even though she's pulling the wrong color. <laughs> but it just shows she was always destined to be a Power Ranger. And I one interesting thing is the speech is like you know the old dude who's kind of like the wise guy and uh, the mentor type person the elder he tells them the story of how like you know five men will pull the swords out the stone and that's so cliche from back in the day where people think only men can like do stuff and i love the fact that they gender bent um maya and made her female and stuff and of course kindreds and it shows that you know um that two females can do it and it would have been interesting like if the guy let's say the guy pulled the pink one out right well he didn't wear a skirt <laughs> and so what's even greater about this is we get a, a really heartfelt heart to heart from like maya as they're like just sitting in the tree and everything Maya is just kind of like, you know, like things could have been so much more differently if Furio like never came to like the planet and turned the people in the stone. And, and it's a real like emotional scene. It's short, it's brief, but I love how Serena like delivered it and everything. Cause you know, Maya has that youthful like um, naiveness to her and she did it like perfectly and stuff, you know? And, you know, I always say, like, solo Power Ranger episodes, that's when you get the best acting out of somebody. They really give it their all on this stuff. And I just love, because she's, like, she's furious. She's frustrated, because she's just, like, she's pissed, you know what I'm saying? Because her planet got taken away from her, and now she's in a completely different place where she's constantly, like, you know, having to fight the forces of evil and being around people she don't know, but she gets along with, but she don't know them. That's not like her people, you know? And I just love how like, like frustrated she is. Cause like, she always gets frustrated at stuff, but like, this is like really like, instead of getting mad at like one of her fellow Rangers, which she does a couple of times, you know, she's just like furious at the circumstances that like caused her to be there and stuff. 
And so, you know, they head back to like the place and they're like, you know, they go to sleep and everything. And she wants to know why Kendris is still up. And Kendris, of course, is like heartbroken and everything. And then, so in the middle of the night, Sandra starts to act a little shady and like, oh, okay, I knew something was up. See, at this point in time, I really didn't think. Like, I kind of wonder how in the world did Chandra get there and how did she have an outfit identical to Maya and stuff. But, you know, I was just kind of like, you know, her backstory seems to check out and seems to make sense until it happened. The big reveal. That's not Sandra whatsoever. It's an imposter, a monster, a phoenix type monster. Now, the transformation between Chandra and the monster is like good, especially for like the 90s. And so we see her um interact with villa Max, but he doesn't talk in this episode and trakina this is the first like one of one one of the rare times we've ever seen trakina on terra adventure and it's neat and it's at night you really don't get to see power rangers at night they're always doing stuff in the day and so that's a real treat right there and so you know she wants her to steal the galaxy book so she goes to like you know headquarters and she gets like a key and there's some guards and she ends up like knocking the guards out and trying to steal it but unable to and when the guard shoots her in the leg and so the next morning they're having like a briefing and stuff and Kendris finds out that somebody tried to steal the galaxy book and she saw Sandra leave in and out of like the uh, room and stuff so she confronts Maya about this and thinks that Chandra might be like an imposter or working for Trakina. This is like the second argument we've ever seen these two get into. And because Maya don't want to hear it. Maya is like in a good place right now. She has her best friend back and she doesn't like her new best friend ragging on her old best friend and stuff. So she huffs, she puffs and she just like runs on out of there. And then so all of a sudden she sees Sandra like walking towards like the headquarter building and so she follows her and stuff all of a sudden she can hear like alarms and oh no 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 first she confronts Sandra um in like the elevator and she basically tells her, like leave her alone and stuff so then she confronts the guard as like the bells and whistles and alarms are going off and stuff you know and they tell her somebody stole the galaxy book and so like Maya now knows what Kendris was saying is true and what I found was really weird is that they allow Maya to just walk into headquarters that should be like off limits to like civilians not only that but she literally grabs a guard by the arm and ask for like demands for questions and stuff and it's kind of like why would he answer her she's not even an officer she don't work there <laughs> so then she does the most jungle girl thing of them all she repels down the building and she confronts Sandra and everything and then so Sandra like transform and they have like a civilian fight and it's nice to see them have a civilian fight because around this time people didn't really know martial arts on Power Rangers and they didn't really do too many civilian fights they mostly just like morph and then so she morphs but it's like a half morph and everything where the helmet just like comes on but it's still nice to see her morph and I love seeing them morph I want one of those morphers so bad Hasbro is taking their sweet and precious time they just came out with the yellow movie um Mighty Morphin Power Ranger Morpher and stuff and you know it just looks like cheap plastic it just really does and I, I, I really want to get Tommy's Morpher because I was unable to get it um, with the Bandai thing. And I don't want that cheap plastic. I don't want the pegs on the coins. And I don't want the movie version. I want the gold freaking Morpher, man. I, I don't think they're going to do that. I just think they're going to do like the movie one. And that sucks. The movie one doesn't even have the words on there that says um, Power Rangers. It's in there, but only when it lights up. And, you know, I don't know what the world's going on with Hasbro, man. I really don't. Because I mean, I saw some people complaining that they're all like, well, where am I going to put this Morpher at? Because I already got the pink and the blue, and now I'm going to get this and three stands, and I'm going to run out of self um, shelf space. <laughs> 
So those two fight, and Maya is able to get the book back. Now, this is what's really cool, that the fight scene, you really can't really tell the Sentai from the American footage until the rest of the Rangers show up. Then you can tell it's the Sentai, because everybody comes in, Mike does his like really cool move and everything. Mike actually shows up in this, but like he never shows up unmorphed. And they probably need the money for like the transformation budget of like um Sandra. Now the monster's voice is Kara Holt, who played the first version of Divatox in Turbo Show. And so like then they call on the lights of Orion. And I love how Maya took center charge. I love it when it's like a solo episode and that person takes the um the charge and everything. So of course the monster turns big and it's Zora time. Now, this is the biggest era of them all. As they're fighting like the monster and the Zora, they kind of get the butt kick. She calls on Stratoforce, but Centaurus shows up. But all we see is um, Stratoforce like whooping on the thing and running around in the circle. <laughs> it's so cute. And so, you know, Around this time, Zord action was very limited. They really didn't try to do that much. Um, and as the seasons go on by, they really do less and less and less and less. And so, you know, the monster is defeated and everything. But then once again, we see the three Zords standing next to each other. But Centaurus shouldn't even be there. So then in a really sad type scene, we see Kendrick's walk up to a tree and Maya has to be at least 20, 30, 40, 50 feet up in the tree. <laughs> Sitting there just looking sad, having flashbacks of the real Sandra and everything. And, you know, and she tells Kendrick, so I don't know how Kendrick was able to hear her without shouting. <laughs> but she tells her, you know, one day, I'm gonna find like the real Sandra and I'm going back to Miranoi and everything. And you know, cause we really don't ever get this. I love it, man. We really don't get to see her being sad for her home planet and stuff. And you know, so she jumps down and they have a good heart to heart, you know, cause you know, they had that little tiff and everything and they just like walk off like, um, hold each other shoulder by shoulder, or arm around each other, and they just like walk off smiling and giggling. And that's a nice scene because we really don't get to see those two interact a lot, like we saw um, Caron and Maya and stuff. And like I said before, you know, I just love this episode so much. The emotion and drama was brief, but it was good enough and it was pretty strong. It didn't need no overall like too dramaticness, it didn't need no like too much crying and everything. It was just the right amount. And this is what pisses me off about people that are like, oh, a Power Rangers is a kid show and it's so silly and goofy and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, nah, man, they did not watch every season. I know they don't, because they always talk about, well, I'm only familiar with like my Morphin and then one day I decided to check out the Nickelodeon show and I saw some part of it like fart and it like destroyed a monster and did it in it. And I'm just like, you know, they didn't watch every season. They wouldn't know that Power Rangers is good. It has its edgy moments, it has its dark moments. I hate how people always diss Power Rangers, but they love things like X-Men, Justice League, and the Avengers when they really are on like similar levels and stuff. The only problem is, is this, that Power Rangers tends to go a little bit in the more lighthearted sense because they always try to gear it towards kids and stuff. But I'm telling you, man, there are some like really edgy, dark, emotional moments and stuff. And people need to realize that and people need to respect that. Happy Women's History Month, everybody. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye.